Hey there, it's Clay with ModernLove.Life, and in this video, we're going to be talking about what to do after you meet up with your ex. And stay tuned to the end because we're going to be talking about why some of the other advice that perhaps you have heard elsewhere is, well, let's just say not what I would recommend and how it can actually be counterintuitive to the kind of result that you want. But let's go ahead and get into this. So, you know, oftentimes a lot of people do have this very prominent goal of getting a meetup with their ex. You know, depending on where you're starting from, this can seem like a big stretch for you. It can seem like something that it might take quite a while or quite a bit of effort to get to the actual meetup. And then the meetup happens. And then what do you do after that? <laughs> Many times people are so focused on getting that meetup that they don't stop to think about what's going to happen afterwards. So let's go ahead and get into that. Now, of course, a lot of this depends on what happens during that first meetup, if it goes really well, if there's awkward silences, if the two of you somehow end up fighting or something like that. There are going to be different sorts of action courses that I would probably recommend that you take. If the two of you are connecting really well during this first meetup, it might make sense to just schedule or arrange some sort of second meetup right then and there. You know, again, I don't know how this first meetup is going, but, um, you know, if the two of you are talking about something and it's like, okay, hey, we're having a great time right now. Oh, we were mentioning this event that's happening next weekend. Hey, do you want to go? Let's go together. Like that can make sense. That can come up really organically and it can be a great way to get that next meetup going. If not, that's totally fine. If it doesn't, doesn't go that way, that is absolutely okay. But, um, what you want to do if you did have a good positive first meetup with your ex is to at least keep the positive momentum going forward over the next few days. Now, if you had a positive meetup together, you probably shared some sort of inside jokes, connected in some way, shared some memories from the past, created new memories, created little hypothetical things like, you know, joking around about, oh yeah, well, if you did this, then that would happen and maybe we'll rob a bank or, you know, something like that, you know, like little, little uh, fantasy jokes and things like that. You can obviously keep that stuff going over the next few days just to kind of keep that positive momentum momentum going. It also lets you to keep your finger on the pulse of sort of where your ex is emotionally. Like, are they still emotionally open and receptive to you? Or are they experiencing some sort of positive pullback? We have talked about positive pullbacks before in the past, by the way. Positive pullbacks are something that you can experience in those five stages your ex goes through and getting back together with you. If you have no idea what those five stages are, I would highly recommend that you check out this video playlist up here. A lot of people have heard me talk about these five stages and they have said it's been incredibly insightful for them. So um, I would recommend that you check that out as well too. We want to keep our pulse on the level of connection and your ex's level of interest in staying connected with you because we want to know when the right time to connect with them again is, to get together with them again is, to suggest taking your connection to that next level because what we don't want to happen is for all of this work uh, to, to build up to the two of you meeting up and then for it to just sort of slip away um, as the two of you just, you know, text indefinitely or uh, whatever. We want to hopefully turn this like, okay, hey, we met up, move it into another forward upward movement that allows the two of you to connect again and so on and so on and so on and upward and upward until the two of you can actually build up that emotional connection to the point where we're able to get back together. If you do need to uh, build up that emotional connection or keep it in sync, for the next couple days after that first meetup because maybe you weren't able to schedule a meetup uh, right then and there on the spot, um, that's okay. And then, you know, over the next uh, few days, week, whatever, uh, just go ahead and keep that emotional connection as good as it can until something presents itself that could allow the two of you to meet up or allow the two of you to connect in a deeper sort of way, such as, you know, talking on the phone, maybe stopping by for a, for a quick chat, visit with one another, uh, something like that, video call, things along those lines. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to continue to expose ourselves to each other in a meaningful sort of way, because of course, texting, yes, you are in a sense communicating, but we wanna have high quality connections. And that is easiest to do through face-to-face -face meetups, uh, voice calls, video calls, things like that, where you can actually interact in real time. Texting isn't really that way because you know, you're know you stripping out the vocal tone, you're stripping out the ability to see someone's facial expressions and body language, you're stripping out the ability to interact with them in real time so you can get an unfiltered version of them, etc. So we want to keep things moving forward. I would suggest, you know, getting something to, suggesting getting together 
when you hit some sort of high in the connection, either if it's through text, if you're riding a positive wave from the previous meetup, or when something, you know, seems to present itself, just say, oh, hey, you know, I was just noticing that this thing is happening, or I just heard something about that. Do you want to get together? Do you want to meet up? Do you want to talk about this? Uh, you know, maybe maybe they have an important uh, presentation at work on a certain day. Oh, do you want to talk about it? Uh, and I can give you a little bit of a pep talk the day before, whatever it might be, right? That, of course, is based on the idea that, hey, they're going to stay positive and open to connecting with you and all of that. Now, if you start to get some sort of resistance towards that deeper connection or uh, meeting up again, what we wanna do is of course stay curious and ask them. Don't resist the urge to fill in the blanks yourself and say, oh, they haven't texted me back in like two or three days or something. Obviously they're losing interest. I should just slink back, not pursue this anymore. Because again, that's, that's going up to that crescendo of meeting up the first time and then sort of trailing off again. We don't want that to happen. So if there is that sort of pullback, what we wanna do is wanna get curious, turn around and ask them what is going on. Hey, it seems like um, um, you need a little bit of space right now. Is there something going on that, that's causing you to need that? Many times it has absolutely nothing to do with you. It could just be something totally different that they're going through in their own life. Um, and if you give them the opportunity to say, hey, I'm just having a really crazy week, or hey, some sort of personal family, whatever, just got in the way, and I've, I'm, I'm dealing with some kind of drama right now, you know, whatever it is at least you know, and the two of you can start to navigate around that rather than you letting your fears, insecurities, self-doubts, etc., rush in to fill in the blanks. If you, if you did not have a positive interaction on your first meetup, obviously what I'd do then is to go back and look at what caused you to not have that positive interaction. Were you too nervous? Were you too much in your head and not in your, your heart or your emotions? Were you not being present? Were you not staying curious? Were you putting them on too much of a pedestal? Were you uh, looking at them as someone that you had to impress, someone that you had to uh, get validation from rather than a human being? Were you out of alignment with your own values? Were you not holding firm to your own composure? Like what, what was out of alignment? I'd go back and take stock through that to find out where you need to focus on. And then I'd consider working on that and adding that into your future interactions and see if you can get some sort of better, higher quality kind of uh, interaction moving forward. Okay, so before we go on, I want to just check in with you. If you have liked this video, if this has been helpful for you, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button. It does help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Please make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up, or sorry, hit the bell button next to the subscribe button, all that good stuff. Um, it does help us with YouTube. It's a totally free way to support the channel. Um, okay, so now I want to get into some of the stuff that maybe you have been hearing about elsewhere and why it's... You may have heard that you want to be mysterious. You want to play hard to get. You want to disengage and make them miss you after the two of you have met up. And, you know, if, if, you, if you are genuinely busy, if you're out there, you know, kicking ass in the world and all that sort of stuff, and you just like legitimately don't have time to, to text them, to call them, to schedule another meetup or something like that, hey, fine, don't sweat it. You know, I, I'm very much in favor of you living your best life and doing what you need to do to live that best life in alignment with your values. However, I wouldn't recommend that you fake this because that is going to be an inauthentic move uh, to pretend to be something other than what you are. You know, if you pretend that you don't care, if you pretend that you're just going to back off and you, you could care less about them, if you're just going to pretend that, uh, you know, maybe, may, may, maybe, just maybe I'm dating someone else, um, again, it's fine if you are, but if you're just pretending this, that's inauthentic. And the reason that you're trying to connect with your ex, the reason that you probably want to get back together with them is because you want an authentic connection from them. You want them to be real and genuine and authentic with you. However, if you're not willing to be real and genuine and authentic with them, why would they want to step forward and be real and genuine and authentic with you? Um, what you put out is what you're probably going to get back from other people. Um, so what we want to do is we want to lead by example by being authentic ourselves. So I would not recommend that you play mind games. I would not recommend anything like that. Besides do that, it kind of shifts the intention of what you're doing from, okay, you're someone I like connecting with. Let's connect and let's have a great time spending time with one another and all that sort of stuff. It shifts it from that to, okay, I need to pretend like I'm unavailable because whoever cares the least controls the relationship or some other BS 
fortune cookie advice you heard somewhere else. You know, I need to, you know, I need to be in control of the relationship because relationships are all about power or something like that. Okay, fine. You know, you can go down the power path. You can go and accumulate as much power as you want to. That's okay. But just know that you're playing the power game. And if you play the power game, you may end up winning it and you may end up accumulating lots of power. However, I don't think that most people really want to be in a relationship for the sake of feeling all powerful, unless they're just like crazy insecure or have some sort of like complex or something like that. Um, most people want to have a relationship because they just want to connect with someone. They just want to have an awesome, great, amazing life. And if that's what you want, recognize that going for power is not necessarily going to get you the great connection that you want. What we want to do is we want to be clear about the game that we're playing and we want to move ourselves in alignment with that. If you want a great connection, bring yourself into alignment with what you need to do to get a great connection. If you just want power, that's okay. I'm probably not the guy for you, uh, but just go ahead and go ahead and bring yourself into alignment with what you need to do to gain as much power. Just know that power isn't necessarily going to equal a great relationship. A great relationship is probably, in my experience, based on a strong emotional connection. So if you can connect really well, you're going to naturally get the organic fruits of that, which is um, a great relationship. Uh, if you're going to go for the game of power, all bets are off. Best of luck to you. Uh, again, I'm probably not your guy. But anyway, if you did find this video helpful, uh, I hope you did. Uh, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below letting me know what sorts of videos you'd like to see me make in the future. And if you do want to focus on that emotional connection and bring yourself into alignment with having the best emotional connection that you possibly can, please make sure to check out our course called The X Solution Program over at modernlove.life slash ESP. There's also a link for that down below. The X Solution Program course is our course that we've been um, you know, helping people with since 2011. Um, it helps you to navigate through your ex's emotional world and to create a strong emotional connection through what we call advanced relational skills. Anyway, once again, if that's something that you want some help with, you can go ahead and find the link down in the description box below. Once again, my name is Clay. Thanks so much. Take care, and I will talk to you next time.